In this next video, I will attempt to demonstrate how to build a model for the Titanic uh, exercise on Kaggle. Um, so if you go under competitions and down at the bottom under 101 exercises, you will find the Titanic case. Um, here's a brief explanation of, of what it is. Um, okay, let's go and have a look at the um, maybe home. So basically, Titanic was a ship that uh, uh, hit an iceberg on its maiden voyage and uh, sank. And uh, I think it was carrying approximately 3,000 passengers. Uh, the only way I know this is uh, from watching the famous Titanic movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in, in the 90s. Um, when I was still a teenager and had a crush on Leo. Who didn't? I mean, um, so what we are given here, I mean, you can watch this video, um, I bet it's a lot of fun. Uh, but our task would be if we look at the data that we are given, um, so we, we can download the files from here. I already did that. Um, we also have explanations of what the variables are and uh, if I hop over to the files that I downloaded, particularly the, f the first, the, the train file, um, it's quite intuitive to understand what we are given. So we have a number of passengers, each passenger has a unique passenger ID. Uh, we have a variable which tells us um, whether or not the passenger survived, so zero means did not survive, one means survived. Uh, P class, uh, I think that represents their uh, social class, so you can hop back to the website P class, so uh, this variable represents passenger class, or oh, maybe that's the, the class of the ticket they had on board Titanic, so first class, second class and third class. Go back. Uh, we also have uh, a name for this, uh, these passengers, their gender, their age, um, and then there's a couple of more variables that are uh, a little bit more cryptical. Zip SP. Luckily, we have all the uh, all the variable information or descriptions on the website. So Zip SP would tell us the number of si siblings um, or spouses aboard. Uh, Parch would tell us the number of parents, children aboard and uh, so on. So um, yeah, so one sibling or uh, parent perhaps, zero parents, oh one, one sibling or spouse, um, no parents on board for this particular passenger. Then the ticket, these have um, different values, so I'm not sure how to interpret this, so some, maybe they are like sequential numbers of the tickets that they had, although they don't look like it to me, maybe there's some more information, ticket number, right, so this possibly because these values are, uh, I guess, nominal, it won't help us that much, uh, fare, that's probably the, the fare in pounds I guess, so seven seven pounds twenty five, seventy one pounds. Uh, kinda makes sense. This, pa this passenger was in third class, so their their ticket price was um low. This one was in first class and um fare is uh higher, I guess. But for some of the passengers we have details of their cabin. So I guess because this passenger was in the first class they had a cabin whereas this passenger um, was in third class and I guess the third class passengers didn't have individual cabins um, and then embarked again here uh, tells us where uh, the, the port where the passenger embarked which uh, we have it's, it's a nominal variable we have three uh, different options um, so there's some more explanations as to how these um, the variables are coded. So age is in in years um, and then the relations of so siblings 
counted brothers, sisters, said brothers, and so on, um, spouses, uh, husbands, wives, and so on. Um, so the most obvious thing we can do with this data set is um, create some sort of classification model, trait on this data, and uh, then use it to predict uh, whether other passengers uh, survived or, or didn't survive 